Uh, this video is a comparison of the AMX50 Fosh 155 and the AMX50 Fosh B, which in World of Tanks are both uh, tier 10 tank destroyers. I'm going to go through the comparison. Uh, basically, the difference between the two vehicles is the gun. Everything else is nearly identical or identical. I'm going to go to the comparison screen. Uh, the Fosh 155, which is a vehicle on the left, it's a gift or reward tank. It's not a premium tank, which means you don't get extra credits. But it is a gift tank, which means you can swap the crew in and out, etc. Uh, basically, it has a higher penetration gun. Uh, that's the main difference that's important. Uh, between the two vehicles... Uh, the 155 is a three-shot autoloader, and the Fosh B is a six-shot autoloader. Uh, so obviously you can do a little bit of math, and you can see that the damage per clip is 2150 for the Fosh 155, and it's 2400 for the Fosh B. Uh, the penetration is way higher for the Fosh 155. Uh, for example, the regular rounds are almost as good as the gold rounds on the Fosh B. In addition, the HE rounds for the Fosh 155 are some of the highest in the game. Uh, the load time is much longer at 47.94 is what it says, uh, versus 36 seconds for the Fosh B. Uh, so it should be expected that the DPM uh, should be different between the two vehicles. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't show the uh, value for the DPM. But if you're looking for uh, damage per minute and you don't mind firing gold rounds, you might want to consider the Fosh B, which also has a faster aiming time. Uh, the reason why it has a faster aiming time is because it needs one. You've only got a two-second interclip reload uh, versus five seconds with the Fosh 155. So it's going to take you about 10 seconds to unload uh, your 2150 damage with the Fosh 155, and it will take about 10 seconds to unload your 2400 damage with the Fosh B. And plus you'll reload the Fosh B faster. So as I stated, if you want to get a higher DPM, you might want to consider the Fosh B perhaps with the gold rounds. Uh, the gold rounds on the Fosh 155 is actually some of the highest in the game. It comes up at 395, with the highest being 420 for the Jagdpanzer E100. And 90 for the HE rounds, which is also up near the highest in the game. I believe the Badger might have the highest. Hit points are the same. Hull armor is the same. Engine power is the same. Um, top speed is the same. It says that the concealment values are different, although uh, this might have camo applied. I, I don't know how to remove the camo, so uh, I believe that the, the camo rating will actually be the same. I prefer to play the Fosh 155. I prefer to fire my three shots and get out of there. However, you might prefer the Fosh B. So if you're working on mastery badges and gun marks doesn't matter which one you play. But if you're working on some sort of a mission where you have to do more damage, or maybe if you want to play a little bit more competitively, but it's not necessarily uh, super competitive, you might want to go with the Fosh Speed to increase your damage. Um, so an example of when you would use this, if, if you have to do a mission where it says do 3,000 damage against enemy heavy tanks, this is a type of vehicle that's ideal for that because you can see your target. He's got his full hit points. You unload your three shots real fast, and you get your damage on that target real fast. And you can put your and you can receive damage. You can put yourself in harm's way, receive damage. The amount of damage you're going to do to your opponent could be a lot higher. That's one of the reasons why these are ideal for those types of missions. Uh, a Fosh B, because it's got a six-shot autoloader, that might be good for something like uh, you have to get, let's say, six kills in one game. And the reason why is 
when you get a kill, the enemy has to have low hit points, ideally. Full hit points, difficult. Low hit points, easy. Because you got a six-shot autoloader, the chances that you have a round waiting to fire when there is a vulnerable vehicle nearby is really high. And if you pop up behind two vulnerable vehicles, you could take out two vehicles real quick. So having the six-shot autoloader helps you get more kills if you want to pursue that route. Uh, in terms of uh, crew, you can use the same crew. I'm going to check real quick to see if the crew is identical. We've got loader, driver, gunner, commander. So you can use the same crew in both vehicles. You would use the uh, 50 Fosh B crew uh, in both vehicles. Notice that my win rate is 61% on the Fosh B, which has the lower penetration, and it is 46% on the vehicle with the substantially higher penetration. Uh, in terms of equipping, you're probably going to want to equip uh, the gun laying drive, improved rotational mechanism, improved aiming. Um, those are all a good choice. Now, keep in mind that if you, if you are moving, you use rotational mechanism. And if you're stationary, you use gun laying drive. So that's basically it. If you believe that you're parked all the time and you're not going to move, use a gun laying drive. And the vents, of course, work in all cases, and the improved aiming works in all cases. And if you believe that you're going to be firing at vehicles that are far away, you're probably going to want uh, this improved aiming uh, technology. There's a lot of people who say never use this. It's just not true. Uh, because there's a lot of times when you do have time, I mean, how often does the enemy sneak away at the last second? It does happen, but if you have the time to aim in, you can aim in a few extra seconds, you might want to get the improved aiming, which tightens up your aiming circle. Uh, the Fosh 155 is a vehicle that I put my bonded equipment on. Uh, I don't think it's on right now. I probably demounted it to put it on another vehicle. But because I'm working on getting all the gun marks, I want to get uh, at least two gun marks. I've got uh, 314 vehicles, and I'm using it on other vehicles to get the gun marks. Um, when I am done, I will put the bonded equipment back on this vehicle. This is one of those vehicles that I might play every day. I could play it all day long. I, could ev I would even switch between the two. Uh, perhaps someday I will get full crew on both vehicles. Uh, it's a really nice vehicle. I do have almost every tank in the game. There's probably three vehicles that I have not researched yet. Um, that's basically it. I'm going to talk a little bit about this thing on the top. It's called, I believe it's called a rangefinder. And... If you're close to the enemy, that could be a weak point. Both vehicles have the big range finder on top, which means that you are vulnerable when you are close to the enemy. So try to stay away from the enemy. Uh, one of the issues you have is that you peek over a hill and you think, well, I just got my gun over the uh, top of the hill. That means that the enemy is barely going to see the top of my tank, and then you got this huge rangefinder up on top. And that might be one of the reasons why it affected my win rate, because um, I was vulnerable too often before I realized that I needed to play better. In terms of being tracked, you know, I use a small repair kit, large repair kit, first aid kit that's my choice. I'm going to go through crew real, real quick tell you what I think you should use. Let, let's just return some crew. For the driver, there's something called clutch braking. The traverse speed, which means how quickly it rotates, is really good on this tank, so you don't need the clutch braking. You probably want the smooth ride before the clutch braking. And then you have something like designated target that keeps the enemy lit like an extra second. Uh, because you're sniping at them, if you're spotting them, you want it. If you're not, maybe not so much. 
And uh, other than that, you know, everything is personal preference. Okay, so if you have any questions about these two vehicles, uh, please post below and I will answer them prop promptly. I do check comments every day. Thank you.